Where'd you get that name from? My name's Seven, actually. It comes from my birthday, to be quite honest. Um, my birthday is July 7th, so it's 7-7. Seven, seven. And um, actually, I was born at seven months, too. Seven's just kind of follow me everywhere I go. Um, aside from that, seven biblically means perfection and completion. And I, you know, I say all the time, um, in 2007, I literally just felt spiritually completed. Everything that I prayed for, whether it was for me or for my friends, you know, God gave. So I changed my name then. Um, as far as straighter, I can't take credit for that. So, you know, get that to my dad. Okay, so let's tell us a little bit about how you got started. I know originally you, you know, you're, you're in a girl group and you did some things on MySpace. You got discovered on MySpace. So tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming an artist. It was well, it's so funny. I don't get to tell this story that that often, but um, I was just t texting my cousin last night. The um, MySpace thing. I actually, I I was in a group called TG4 when I was a little younger. Um, after that group ended. You know, I remember me and my family, we moved back to Florida because we were living in California. And my cousin, JJ, he was like, you know, you should create a MySpace page because people are getting record deals off of MySpace now. And um, I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. So he created my page. He put all my music on there, put all of my pictures on there. And next thing I know, Rich Harrison, super producer from D.C., he hit uh, me on MySpace and said, I want you to be in Rich Girl. So I joined Rich Girl. You know, we were together for four years. We were signed to Jive Records and, you know, went on to a Beyonce. And it was just a really great experience for me. We were also we were managed by a lady named Tina Davis, who also manages Chris Brown. Met Chris uh, through her. Started writing with, with Chris. And, you know, I got my first placement with him. It was a song called Yeah, Three Times. You know, went on to write more songs with him on his fame album his fortune album his ex album that's soon to come out and you know rich girl ended and later on i ended up becoming chris's artist and the rest is kind of history so i'm signed to cbe slash atlantic records so talk to me a little bit about your music inspirations <coughs> i know i've heard a lot of people compare you to Aaliyah, and mm -hmm. i read that that's one of your you know one of your inspirations yes. so how does that feel to be compared to such a great artist um yeah i, I say all the time to even be mentioned in the same breath as Aaliyah is just it's I'm just humbled by it um I'm like everybody else out here I love her to death you know what I mean I love her so much and I just I'm, I'm I've always been inspired by her and just just her movement in the 90s and all the other female artists in the 90s you know just the vibe that they had back then the Tony Braxton's um the Mary J's the even the groups from 702 and you know brownstone and jade and you know i love you know mel groups jagged edge and drew hill so i'm inspired by just a, a lot of just 90s music really does inspire me it, it really does it, it sits a, and it has a certain place in my heart i love it so much so you know just all 90s artists really really inspire me and gospel gospel does too I, i'm a huge gospel gospel head i'm a huge fan of gospel just because i love chord changes <laughs> I love chord changes, um, just crazy keys and crazy drums and just the energy all of all of that I love. So I like to incorporate that too. Okay. So do you feel any, um, I guess, pressure or responsibility or heavy responsibility to kind of take R&B to the next level? Because we really don't have that many female R&B artists out right now. We have a few, but, you know, how do you feel about that? Like, do you feel like a huge responsibility for that? Mm, do I feel a huge responsibility uh, for to take R&B further. Honestly, I don't look at it like that, no. I just, I, I feel a, a responsibility uh, to myself to be truthful, you know what I mean? Um, and to just enjoy music and have a good time doing it. And that's all I'm really concerned with, you know. I I feel a, a responsibility just to, I, like honestly, being truthful is just very important to me. Whether it's my truth, or someone else is just, I like songs that people can really feel and really relate to. And honestly, that is a lot of what R&B music is. You know what I mean? It can make you cry one moment. It can make you mad one moment. It can make you feel triumphant. It can make you, it just, it evokes so much emotion. Um, so I just feel a responsibility to be and, and speak as truthfully as I can. And if it turns into some good R&B music, then we got some good R&B music. Okay. So let's talk about your new EP, Call Me Crazy, but what? let's talk this about EP? that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what are some of your favorite songs on the album? Oh, man. Sheesh. It's weird to even hold this in my hand right now. Um, 
my favorite songs on Call Me Crazy. Uh, but I have to go by the by the days. I think today my favorite song on Call Me Crazy. Hmm. I'm in a come on over mood. Like to come on over is kind of I, I think today. That's how I feel today. I, I love that record. Um, it was produced by a producer named D-Mal. Um, I wrote it with a friend of mine named Jado. Shout out to Jado and D-Mal. And come on over. It just, man, I, I just, I love, um, like I said, I do love chord changes. And I love just if something about it feels a little rock, rock and roll-ish. I mean, kind of for me. I, I, I'm weird when it comes to stuff like that, but I love Come On Over Today. It's my favorite today. Okay, so tell us what you want your musical um, legacy to be. Like 20, mm. 30 years from now, what would you like to be remembered by? Um, my What do I want my musical legacy to be 20, 30 years from now? Hmm. I want people to be able to um, still listen to my music 20, 30 years from now. From the music that I'm, this music, I want them to still be able to feel like they can relate to this 20, 30 years from now. And the reason I, I say that is because it, it all goes back to truth. I feel like the things that, you know, I went through on this EP, I, I feel like um, forever and a day people are going to be going through those things. You know what I mean? I, I don't feel like, you know, people not going to stop getting their hearts broken. It's going to always happen. You know, people not going to stop getting arguments. That's going to always happen. You know, people not going to stop having sex. <laughs> Sex on the ceiling is going to always happen. So 20, 30 years from now, I just want them to still be able to live with this and still relate to it. And I want to put out just more more product, more music that they can relate to. That's really a, uh, that's just really a big deal to me. So, yeah.